And what trouble? <laughs> so now coming to the ethics of modern science, I think which is what, you know, we, I was very keen to discuss with you. And you know that I come from a, a field called biotechnology, which is a bad word in, in the vocabulary of many, many people. Because we are tampering with life, you know, we are, we are engineering DNA. I'm also doing inner engineering. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is a very, very, this is a, an amazing science, this is an amazing technology, but it, it is also a very controversial and, and sensitive technology. And, you know, I want to start with a question that says, look, we actually embrace biotechnology when it comes to saving lives, when it comes to genetically engineered drugs, which is, you know, saving, you know, cancer patients and many, many other types of patients who are suffering from debilitating diseases. And yet we have this huge activism against genetically modified crops, which is also saving lives, by the way, because, you know, there is enough data and evidence to show that genetically modified crops never killed people, but hunger and starvation has killed many, many lives. And today if we have solutions to actually feed these hungry, feed the starving, and we know that, you know, genetically modified crops can actually do a lot for our kind of country because you can you know, have drought resistant crops, you can have crops that grow in saline conditions and you know, the, the, the marvels of this technology are many. But people are not willing to have a scientific debate. People are not willing to look at data. People are not willing to look at evidence. They always want to look at long term, uh, absolutely guaranteed, uh, you know, safety of, of a new technology. How do we deal with this? I want your uh, suggestions on how we deal with these kind of uh, questions. Uh, anything new, people will resist. There will always be first people who will resist are moral groups and other kinds of activism groups. This has always been so. Anything new means they will resist not only in biotechnology area, in any area. Nuclear. Oh, not… you don't have to go to that kind of uh, very, what to say, revolutionary things, even something… Uh, you know why… Uh, why does a Manzoor get stoned or Socrates get poisoned or a Jesus get crucified? Simply because they're talking something new. One little extra step, you get… you get killed. So, resistance for new things is not new to humanity. They've always been resisting. Because lot of people think status quo is the answer for everything. Any change, resist. And we have a speciality that lot of people are specialized in, that is for every solution, they come up with a problem. <laughs> Whatever the solution, they will find a problem in the solution. Endlessly it's going on. Having said that, at the same time, see anything that concerns with the basic life-making process of human beings or plant or animal or whatever, this we must tread a little carefully. I think generally the concern, I know there are lots of people who are resisting simply because it's new, that's different. The main concern is commercial forces are leading the thing. For commercial forces, it is not even fair to expect that they've invested a certain amount of money and they have found something which will be very, very worth… you know, really valuable in the marketplace and now you tell them don't use it because we are still thinking what it will do after a thousand years. It's not fair for them. But when commercial forces are leading everything, because we have made economics the main force, now if commercial forces are being allowed to tamper with the basic life material of who we are, 
there is a certain amount of caution that needs to be exercised. Is there an alternative? I think non-commercial forces, maybe government-funded forces, should invest heavily in research. After it has been incubated well for a period of time, it must come out. When it is a commercial enterprise doing this, because every day costs money, every day is either pushing your balance sheet up or down. So commercial aspects will take precedence over other things, you can't blame them for that because they are there to do business. So in this context, we must be little more careful about growing more food. We can grow as much food as we want. If you keep the natural ecosystem the way it should be, we destroy that and then come up with other kinds of hybrid answers, which may be temporary solution but which can completely destroy everything for us. For example, right now in this country, we have 1.3 billion people. We have done many things. We have done some really wonderful things, we have done some very nasty things, all kinds of things we have done. There are a lot of achievements to show in the last fifty years for this nation. We are uh, on the way to the Mars. Many great businesses and enterprises have been built, scientific discoveries have happened, many, many things have been done. But one of the greatest things that we have done is, without any support of technology or any great amount of infrastructure, our farmers with traditional knowledge have managed to generate food for 1.3 billion people. It's it is… it is not a small thing because there is no infrastructure, there is no technology, just traditional knowledge is keeping them going. But it will not keep them going, that's why you're talking about these new additions. But for this to happen in this land, one main reason is we have a land where you can grow crops twelve months of the year, very few nations in the northern hemisphere can do this, we are one of them, that we can grow crops twelve months of the year. And we intercrop and in the same piece of land we are growing four to five crops in a year because of intercropping and all this. This ability is being seriously depleted right now because the quality of the soil has been completely destroyed in the last twenty-five years simply because of technology recommendations that came twenty-five, thirty years ago. They said, all these animals, this nonsense not needed, all you need is a tractor and a bag of fertilizer, everything is done for you. I was also into farming at that time. Uh, <laughs> you will see, you are trying to do this, your neighboring farmer just throws urea and urea and urea, and his plants, boom, they come up like this, yours are looking like this, you look like a fool. But you did all this, now we know many studies are showing in the last twenty-five years, the nutritional value of vegetables in this country has gone down by forty percent. Because soil can be replenished only by leaves from the trees and animal waste, or we must all die. These are three ways to replenish the soil. That also when we die <laughs> Now people putting themselves in stone cases so that they don't become part of the soil. No, one of the most eco-friendly things you can do is when you die, you're buried or burnt and part of the soil, this you must do, you know. You shouldn't go away somewhere. Why I'm saying this is, technology is also doing this. People are making bookings that your body can be allowed to float in the space forever. Right now, what is one concern which is going on? People think it's a religious concern, it's of no religious concern to me. <laughs> Fortunately, religion is only a human problem, animals are not included. <laughs> but people are trying to get them also into the religious 
stage. For example, right now we are slaughtering millions of cattle and exporting it elsewhere. What this means is, you are exporting your topsoil. Almost everything that you eat except the fruits that come from trees, almost everything that you eat is coming from the first four to eighteen inches of the soil on this planet, just this much. If you are going on exporting topsoil of this country in the form of meat or whatever, what will you have in twenty-five, thirty years' time? Already your nutritional value has come down so much. The only way you can make the soil rich is animal waste and this. Right now, I am pushing for this, that there must be a policy. If you own one acre of land, minimum four cattle you must have on the land. <laughs> not… not for its milk, n not for its milk, not for the meat, but for the dung, which is the most valuable thing of an animal that he drops it all over the place, this is how the land can be enriched. Trees you have taken out, animals you are taking it out, what are you planning? So, now you will tell me that in this pot you can grow all the grains that you need because of biotechnology, I won't take it. I know there are many, many positives. There are many, many positives to the biotechnology. We must use it carefully, sensitively, but without culturing the social situation where we take care of our soil and on top of that we do something that's troubling us, we fix something genetically troubling. I am not against any technology. Technology if we don't use, it's like saying we should not use our intelligence. We must use technology. But not taking away the base and trying to do on the surface, this will happen when people jump into something because it's commercially right now good, all kinds of modifications. No, but uh, Sadhguruji, I want to tell you, you made a statement saying that, you know, yes, commercial interests might always be suspect and that the government should actually start investing, investing. in technology. Yes. But that is what is happening in our country. It, the government is actually investing in this technology and yet, there is an issue about accepting that technology. So it's not as if it's only… Co I agree, in other parts of the world it's been commercial. But in India, for sure the government labs have also been partners in, in biotechnology. I'm, I'm glad it is so. And uh, if that is so, I don't think uh, we should uh, excessively fear the little bit of activism that you see. I think that much breaks are needed here and there. They can't stop it. If the government has invested money, and there is sufficient data to show that this doesn't cause any serious damage or distortion, it will anyway become a reality. But some breaks, breaks are okay, breaks are good. And I don't like breaks usually, I only drive with my throttle. But breaks are good, you know, sometimes. So, now let's come to a much more scary aspect of biotechnology.